Mistress of the Moon, and Ron Evans is circling the planet in his command ship. The Apollo 17 mission has already made one brand new discovery, soil, which is colored orange, bright orange. Here's what Cernan and Schmidt said when they found it. It's almost the same color as the LMP decal on my camera. Okay, copy that. That is orange, Jack. Okay, Bob, I trenched across the trend of the yellow by the orange. There is uh, uh, light gray material on either side. Oh, man, that's incredible. Okay, hey, Gene, we're going to have to... That's incredible. You need to get a down sun color. That's incredible. As well as, uh, yeah. I'll, get, I'll get my black and white. I'll get it. dust or soil was not the only accomplishment of Apollo 17, although it's the most colorful discovery made on the moon. Here's Roy Neal to give us the reaction of the NASA people at Mission Control in Houston. Cernan and Schmidt are a little tired after all the activity of the last couple days, but they are outside now making their final moon excursion, and they sound to be in good shape. Their activities described here in Mission Control as the best and most important lunar exploration of them all. The scientists are intrigued by that orange-colored soil discovered last night and say it may be the last gaseous gasp of volcano activity that formed the moon. The Apollo 17 astronauts have accomplished almost everything they set out to do. If they can make a few minor corrections tonight, all of their scientific experiments should work. Also tonight, they've been told to pick up some football-sized rocks to complete sampling the mountainous country in which they landed, a part of the moon that seems to be quite different from previous landings, It'll take months of study to find out just how different. When Cernan and Schmidt get back into their spacecraft tonight, it'll mark the end of man's last planned exploration of the moon. If they continue doing as well as they're doing now, tomorrow they'll lift off from the moon with a mission almost perfectly accomplished. Roy Neal, NBC News, in Mission Control. NBC News will continue to cover the Apollo mission this evening. We'll be on at 7.30 Eastern Time, back again at 10 o'clock, and we'll break into the Tonight Show later this evening to show you Cernan and Schmidt climbing back into the lunar module. They very well may be the last men to walk on the moon this century, and we want to see their final actions. The Apollo 17 astronauts, Eugene Cernan and Jack Smith, have begun their final exploration of the moon, an exercise that may well be anticlimactic in view of their scientific discovery last night. ABC's Jules Bergman has a report on that ex expedition and this evening's objectives. Tired but elated as they explored some of the most spectacular lunar terrain men have encountered, Cernan and Schmidt have already discovered what they came for, some of the oldest and the youngest lunar soil and rocks ever found. The older rocks may be the oldest encountered, more than four and a half billion years old. But they were dwarfed by the major scientific find of the flight. It's trench time. You can see this in your color television, I'll bet you. I'll have the orange soil on the boat. Okay, Jack, let's get The orange soil, very likely from volcanic venting, showed oxidation and possible water traces from the last fiery gasps of a dying moon. 
with clear evidence that volcanoes racked the small, obscure planet as recently as 100 million years ago. A planet that lacked the ingredients to become Earth-like. A planet that never quite made it as a place. Geologist Jack Schmidt wanted more time working at the orange soil, but they'd fallen behind schedule, and working in rough, uncertain terrain, the astronauts had to press on to their next exploration station. But even before tonight's third EVA, this final Apollo flight has paid off. Tonight, running late on their third traverse, Cernan and Schmidt journey north about eight miles in their lunar rover to the base of North Massif or North Massive Mountain up here. Their flight plan has been shortened somewhat to give them more time for observation. Apollo 17 has already proven the value of man the scientist on the moon. This is Jules Bergman at ABC Space Headquarters. ABC News live coverage of the activities of the Apollo 17 astronauts on the moon will continue tonight at 7.30 Eastern and 6.30 Central Time. Apollo 17 astronauts Eugene Cernan and Jack Schmidt have begun their third and final walk across the lunar surface. This was the scene a short while ago as the two spacemen went through the laborious task of loading up the lunar rover for this very last trip on the moon. Uh, the, uh... <laughs> I don't know why it's not working. Uh, I this is the ticket and a way check. Get rid of this thing. We don't need it anyway. Okay, opening and closing the pallet didn't interfere at all with those tenders. Okay, copy that. Uh, these are in clamp now. Now okay. tape. Okay. Now, the big bag is on the inside, though. Yeah, but it's also in the way. Okay, I got it. Sure is. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Don't close it. Let me get out of the way. I'll open it. <laughs> See, it drags over that uh, locking device. Okay, let me just see what we got to do here. Okay. Big bag, dust brush. B7. Gate, not 20 big dispenser, uh, commander's camera. My bag dispenser to the LMP. Door cap dispenser to the gate. Okay, and Jack, you're going to have to take the pan now. Well, as soon as I finish up here, okay. I'll do that. And after you take the pan, we'd like you to retrieve the cosmic ray experiment. They're expecting a little solar storm, and before the rain gets on the cosmic ray experiment, they'd like to uh, retrieve it. We'll leave it in the ETB during the traverse. Okay, after the uh, pan, all right. Roger. And just be a nominal okay, retrieval, and we'll put it in the uh, ETB. Copy the gate. Okay. CBS News will present more pictures from the moon in another special broadcast tonight beginning at 11.30 Eastern Time, 10.30 Central. And finally tonight, another look at the surface of the moon. Astronauts Gene Cernan and Jack Schmidt are on their third and final excursion, and here is how that's going. You know, my fender got a little kinked here. It shouldn't go to help us. Hey, uh, Jack, can we see your uh, cold visor up? You may want to put it down out here in the sun. Well, I think I might. I can't see with it down. It's scratched. Bob, I'll uh, I'll use it. I think I can monitor that one. Hey, I'm standing on a boulder track. How does that make you feel? That makes me feel like I'm coming over to do some sampling. I would have been if you were standing there before that boulder came by. I'd rather not think about it. Okay. 
Pictures like those may not be seen again, perhaps in our lifetime. The manned space program will go on with Skylab, the shuttle, and docking with a Russian spaceship, but the old moon is likely to go undisturbed for a long time after Shernan, Cernan and Schmidt of Apollo 17 leave its surface tomorrow. Good night for NBC News. Of Apollo 17, Gene Cernan and Jack Schmidt rode their lunar module into orbit around the moon this afternoon. The liftoff worked as planned, and man's activities on the surface of the moon are now finished, at least for the foreseeable future and maybe for the rest of the century. Here's how it looked in real time and in slow motion as the spacecraft Challenger lifted off the moon. Three. tonight at around 7.45 Eastern Time, the spacecraft Challenger will rendezvous with the command ship America in its 54th orbit around the moon, and the two ships will link up. Astronaut Ron Evans, <coughs> pardon me, is in the command ship. NBC News will cover that maneuver live on television sometime just after 7.45 Eastern Time this evening. David Brinkley's journal tonight deals with the future of the space program. David? With this last moon landing, the primary job given the National Space Agency is done, and done well. And now, one not familiar with the Washington establishment and bureaucracy might expect to see the space agency closed down and the money spent on something else. Well, needless to say, it won't. Instead, it has dreamed up a multi-million dollar plan for a space shuttle, a sort of flying truck to be put in orbit around the Earth and kept there for long periods. Guesses at the cost run from $5 billion up to $30 billion and more. The eventual cost is vague and uncertain. Even more vague and uncertain is just what its purpose is, what the benefits might be, how it might be useful to the American people required to pay for it. Even in reading NASA's press releases, it is hard to find any real purpose. It will, of course, keep the agency's payroll going. 
It'll mean government contracts for builders of space hardware and jobs in their plants. But the American people might wonder if all these billions and all of the science and engineering and work might not produce something more useful. If this country really needs another expensive piece of hardware in orbit, when here on the ground we can hardly get the mail delivered. The space shuttle will take enormous amounts of money, talent, and energy. In a country with as many problems as serious as ours, there must be some better way to use it. The Apollo 17 astronauts lifted off from the moon this evening to rejoin their command ship for the return voyage to Earth. They carried with them a valuable cargo of rocks that will provide scientific clues to the moon's history. We have a report on the highlights of their final hours on the moon from ABC's Jules Bergman. Ending their third EDA, Gene Cernan and Jack Schmidt included a special rock, the Peace Rock, in the 249 pounds of lunar samples they're bringing home. A fragment will go to each youngster from 80 nations who watched the flight from the Houston Space Center as a symbol of man learning to live together in peace in the future. Then they move the TV camera to show the plaque they're leaving on the moon as a legacy from the last Americans who'll be there for many years. The words our new man completed its first exploration of the moon, December 1972 A.D. May the spirit of peace in which we came be reflected in the lives of all mankind. This is our commemoration that will be here until someone like us, until some of you out there who are the promise of the future, come back to read it again and to further the exploration and the meaning of Apollo. Then getting back into the lunar module, the Challenger, Schmidt became a champion hammer thrower, getting rid of a lunar tool. Look at that. Beautiful. Looked like it was going a million miles, but it really did. <laughs> then late this afternoon, the critical blast off from the moon. 99, proceeded, three, two, one. Ignition. Fly away, Houston. That's your good. Ag five. Get the order. order. After rendezvous and docking with Ron Evans orbiting around the moon in the command module, they'll get ready to head back to Earth Saturday. This is Jules Bergman, ABC News. Good evening. The last Apollo astronauts to visit the moon have left the lunar surface. The liftoff was right on schedule at 5.55 p.m. Eastern Time. And these pictures of astronauts Cernan and Schmidt leaving the moon were shot by the camera left behind on their lunar rover. 99, proceeded. 3, 2, 1, ignition. Right away, Houston. That's your good. Act 5. Over. Let's take a look again at that in slow motion. the base of the lunar module which the astronauts left behind on the moon.